Caddis Maximus here. This is one of Craftsman's best ratchets, easily. I've reviewed a variety of Craftsman ratchets. Ones that I really like is like this uh, 43176 VR USA series. Really like the mechanism in them, but you do have to uh, keep them real clean. This, as far as their pair heads, is probably one of the best. I don't own any of their Chinese made stuff after Sears sold them. Some of their designs are probably more modern, a little bit better. As far as the USA ones, this definitely takes the cake. A lot of people are familiar with this style. This is probably the best selling Craftsman's, which I call the black switch version. But actually in the uh, old tool, the, the old timer tool store, they actually have a few of these where these switches are missing. They do fall out. Also, the quick release button was plastic on these. Really don't like it. This is the 44816, it's the VVM series. And the ball detent is super shallow. Barely holds onto the socket. Maybe that's better on other ones, but I really didn't like that at all. Comments on that video mentioned Craftsman's that had the machine metal ring. And when I saw this Craftsman and saw this machine metal ring, I immediately knew what they were talking about. Just a way better design. Simple E-clip that holds on a machine ring that holds in the anvil in. Anvil play on this unit. It's a little sticky, but it's actually pretty good. Really good. It's not perfectly tight, but more than respectable. And I have a Proto uh, 5450P here. It's a little bit better than the Proto. Although I still, of course, recommend this Proto 5450. It's one of my favorite long handle ratchets. This indeed is a 15 inch ratchet. The handle is I have to say it's a little bit wider than the newer I-beam ratchets, but certainly a little bit thinner. And never even knew they made long handle ratchets that were straight. And another nice thing is versus the reverse lever on the black handle one, this one is just really thick. A whole bunch, it, even though it's cast sink, is still very substantial. And it has its own separate snap ring to ensure that it's held in place. Really like that. Very strong quick release spring. Actually, this is surprising right here. It's hard to tell, but you can just see how uh, my thumb is turning white from the pressure. A socket will never ever fall off of this. And you can see that it has really good protrusion and it's well designed. Poor quality quick releases, they don't do the fitting, it isn't shaped quite right. And so the ball can sink in a little bit or kind of press to quick release. What I mean is, this is an example of a poor design quick release where it it protrudes pretty good, but if there's any pressure, you can see that the ball is actually forcing the button in. So it's nice to see that this Craftsman isn't like that. Definitely like this ratchet. You know what? Let me clean this up. We'll take a look inside. So anyway, that other Craftsman is going to go into my junkyard tools box because that thing uh, isn't close. These are the ones I'm really going to... The, the, <laughs> those Block and Paul ones like I showed with that round head. And these, I don't know who AFL is, but I was pretty stoked to pick this up. I did pay 20 bucks for it, but these are definitely it. So much better design than those black switch ones. So what we have is we have a little internal snap ring that actually kind of expands out, which is an interesting way. It's a little funky getting access to these because you kind of got to dig some little pliers under there and then just pry it up like so and always a bit exciting trying to once you get it released you actually have to grab it like this and kind of wobble it back and forth so it makes it just a little bit more of a hassle to take apart but it certainly is a much better design so here's the snap ring and it's specially designed so when it expands out it just halfway fits into the groove and halfway fits into this undercut on this steel collar. I really like that steel collar nice and deep. Probably what holds the anvil, keeps the anvil so straight. Here's our anvil. Nice and simple. They do have a counter bore in the top of the ratchet to hold it, so I don't mind that. It's only a 36 tooth, but it's not too bad. And it indeed has a two tooth paw. That paw, as you can see, has actually been dropped down into here. So in order to get that out, we have to do the second snap ring, which I really like. This switch is never falling out on you accidentally. Probably the worst thing that could happen is maybe dropping in such a way that that breaks off. Same type of uh, snap ring, although this one's be just a little bit more funky to try to get under here. 
and it's just a compact pair head because they have to drill out through the top. This switch just has a flat notch, and then here's our paw. Out of there. This thing's really goopy. I do recommend using light oil. I've learned that. My subscribers have really let me know. And it is true. I mean, if you use a high quality synthetic grease, it's not as bad because those don't harden up like other greases. But pretty much any normal grease will do this. Over time, it loses the oil because grease has oil emulsified in it. And then it slowly leaks out of the grease. That's how grease lubricates. But then that base product, especially organic grease, really organic grease, starts to harden up and this becomes really sticky and gross. So I have to spend a minute cleaning this up. Definitely some machine work in this, and I really like just how compact it is. It seems pretty solid. I'm sure the head is probably as strong as what a quick-release drive square is on a half inch. But they did take out quite a bit of material. I'm sure it's still pretty strong, but I'm just surprised how... This it seems a little bit thin down there. I'm sure it's just fine, especially compared to modern ratchets where they just throw huge amounts of steel at them. Here's a perfect example how hard that, oh, you can't see in there. Now you can just barely see, but this stuff, it's like, you know, plastic. Nice and clean now. I almost forgot to mention the best feature about this rash, which, really, which one of the things that really sets it apart is it has a little ball, a little ball, excuse me, check ball oil port. And so you would actually take something like a little uh, thing of three in one oil or something or even a pump oiler, you just put it over the top and push and squeeze in and makes it super easy to put just a little bit of light oil in there. Uh, this is definitely a craftsman that was designed to actually be kept for a long time, not thrown away. It's a real shame. This ratchet's super nice though. There's a ton of parts, surprisingly enough, for the ratchet. If you count the quick release, you've got the ball, the quick release pin, center pin, the spring, and the anvil. That's four pieces just in that alone. We have eight pieces here. It's so interesting the way it's a pair head, but it's kind of hybridized a little bit the design with the round head. So instead of having that pair head bottom plate, this ends up becoming your bottom plate. And that's like a quarter inch thick piece of steel. Interesting enough, interestingly enough, the way it's designed, you can pull out the paw and the reverse lever and never have to touch the anvil, which is kind of weird. And so if we were to count the, this as four, then we would have 11 parts there and 13. And then this is three parts. This is a check ball, a spring, and a little brass fitting. Um, so that's three parts by itself. That would be 16 parts. Excuse me, 15 parts. 15 individual pieces just for an in, a ratchet. So I don't feel bad about that uh, clickbait title because it's not really clickbait. The way this craftsman's designed is just unlike any of the other craftsmen's I've seen. Really, so I wonder what era. This is probably 80s or something, 70s through 80s. But these are definitely the craftsmen that uh, you would want to pick up. That's for sure. This is just, you know, the heft of just this reverse lever alone is pretty wild. This thing is just super thick. Anyway, putting this back together, surprisingly enough, the little bat wing paw, which, you know, Williams and many others use, uh, can be driven on either side. So that makes it a little bit more convenient. But this should be real easy to reassemble. I just have to get this super duper long spring in there. That's like one of the longest uh, detent springs I've ever seen. Get that down in there. Got that in there. This is always the funnest part of any ratchets is dealing with getting the ball detent mechanisms back in place. Kind of got to set the ball right on top of the spring. Get the paw kind of ready to go in there. And I suspect I'm going to have to press it in from, press it down from this side. This is going to be a hassle. It took me a minute to figure it out, but I actually put the paw in upside down. There's enough clearance for the ball to stick out. Then I just use a precision screwdriver to push the ball in. And then another screwdriver to slowly turn the, the ratchet paw until it's in the correct position. Getting this little thing back on is pretty easy. I do like this kind of clip design. 
It's a little bit finicky getting them out, but it's actually super easy to get them back in, surprisingly enough, because all you have to do is grab it with the needle nose, set it on in there, and kind of fuss it in the place. What's nice about it is once you get it set in there, it won't fully seat unless uh, you have it in the proper position and it's properly actuating the anvil. Yeah, that works just so much better now. Super nice. Really like the solidity of this reverse switch, the way it's held in there. Get a little bit of oil on this. I don't promote this pro long. It's just this can is, I don't, you don't need very much of it and it seems to last forever. It does seem to dry up just a little bit more quickly than I'd like. But uh, I like to make use of uh, all, all my little cans of lubricant. So this ends up being, uh, seems like it'll be just fine. You can put a little bit in there. We can already hear how much better that's operating. A little bit on this side. Put the other clip around this. Squeeze it and pop her in there. Actually, I'll do it just like this, right on the end, because that's how I know it needs to be in order to get seated. And that should be it. Make sure it's nice and well in there. And we're done. This thing is much better. Let's take a look at the anvil play. Now I've got all that hardened grease out of there that may have been artificially. And the anvil isn't super tight. Now the anvil has is easily the same as that proto. So that hardened grease was just taking up space and making it seem like it was a little bit tighter, but it ensures that it runs smoothly. Nonetheless, the way this is designed, 15 total individual parts just for a ratchet, uh, super compact and just how thick and heavy duty this reverse lever is, the way it has a nice, really positive snap ring retention, the same with just the super heavy duty uh, bottom plate. This really is, this is probably the best Craftsman, easily the best Craftsman USA ratchet I've seen uh, yet, at least for the vintage ones. This thing is super nice, and uh, I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye out for uh, any of the others. And yes, I do feel fortunate that I, the first one of these that I found actually happened to be the 15-inch long handle. I guess the only real caveat is that it is quick release, so that hole drilled through the center of the anvil just does make it a little bit a little bit weaker, all things being equal to other ratchets, just because it has a little bit less material in there. But other than that, uh, this is the kind of tool that actually helps build a manufacturer's name. I think they probably, were, except for that one block and pawl design, which was those special round heads, um, I think Craftsman basically went downhill from whenever these came out. These, this thing is actually really pretty darn nice. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.